Yeah, hi everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, today, I'd like to tell you about Wikisaurus. It's an open source big data platform. Um, it's open source started this year. Uh, and today I'd like to give you a brief overview uh, of what, what it is and why it can be helpful to you. Maybe people are coming, so yeah. Uh, first of all, first of all, yeah, let me introduce myself. My name is Andre. Uh, I'm working as a technical project manager of which is ours for more than five years, um, trying to make my best to make this platform uh, good as a product. So this year is special for us because uh, starting from March, we finished the project on opening which is ours to public. We opened all our open uh, all our source code and now everyone can use it, can try it, uh, can download it from GitHub. I'm working in IT for more than 15 years. I have some experience with uh, Hadoop for a long time. And uh, all this time I'm working in infrastructure with different databases and uh, distributed systems. So today uh, I'd like to talk about Wittesaurus and tell you what, what it is and uh, how can you use it. First of all, uh, Wittesaurus is a platform for distributed storage and processing of big data. For those of you who is not familiar with big data, it's something which is not suitable for your original tools to process and to store. So you need lots of servers, you need some software to combine them together and to create some logical cluster where you can store data and process it. And which is ours is such kind of software. Uh, before the March of this year, uh, it was only one system in open source, which was uh, widely used, it's called Apache Hadoop. And there were some different distribution of this and forks. Uh, which is ours is not a fork and not a distribution of Hadoop. It's our own development. Uh, started from scratch more than 10 years ago, internally, written on C++. Um, as I have said, this year we open sourced it using Apache 2.0 license. And uh, we're using it internally. So uh, this system is not something that is created just now. It was developed 10 years ago. It started development 10 years ago, and now uh, it's just started to be open source. So uh, one main difference between Hadoop and Wittesaurus is that uh, we've tried Hadoop before internally uh, for our needs and failed to use it properly. So we decided to create something better. Um, and uh, one thing about Wittesaurus is that it has excellent scalability. So it's possible to create clusters, very huge, where you can store exabytes of data and have more than a million CPU cores in it. And we have such a cluster inside our internal company. Um, I believe it's possible to do the same in, with Hadoop, but we failed. And we don't know any other installations of uh, Hadoop of such size. And it's quite important. I will tell later why. So. This is our technical details. I think it's the most important slide for you and most interesting. Um, let's start from the bottom, which is ours consists of several layers. And in the bottom, there is a Cypress. It's our distributed file system and metadata storage. If you're familiar with Hadoop, there is a Apache HDFS for file storage. There is Hive Metastore for metadata storage. And there is also Apache Zookeeper who enables you to coordinate uh, Apache HDFS to be high availability. Uh, in which is ours, it's only one component called Cypress, and it's a transactional distributed file system where you can also store metadata. So in Cypress, you can store not only files like in HDFS, but you can also store tables, and this is our main object of storage. We have two kinds of tables. First called static tables, which allows you to store your data for analytics like logs. You can append data there. It's very common and very similar to files. But if you'd like to change your data there, it's quite expensive. So you need to start MapReduce or some other operation and to process a huge block of your table. But we also have something called dynamic tables. Here it is. And it's a, it's a transactional k-value store also uh, built, inside, oh, built over the Cypress. So we store the data inside Cypress. And it gives you an opportunity to use which is ours as an OLTP storage. So it's also tables with transactions, very familiar to maybe HBase, but with transactions. Or Google Spanner, I don't know. Um, so both these things allows you to store different data with different partners in Cypress. Uh, and transactions gives you ease of use. 
Um, we also have uh, cellular, which is also common and very popular, very, uh, very similar to Apache Yarn. So it also has uh, hierarchical, hierarchical uh, pool trees. It also allows you to uh, split your resources like CPU, GPU, and memory between users and create uh, different uh, pool trees to split your, your resources. Uh, and our scheduler also supports MapReduce paradigm, uh, but also we have something called vanilla operations, which allows you to run uh, similar uh, to Kubernetes containers inside our scheduler, so just to get a container for any workload you'd like. But I believe no one is writing MapReduce operation in 2023, so uh, we of course have some kind of uh, engines which allows you to easily process your data. First of all is YQL. It's a SQL-like interface, so very ANSI-like and it's easy to use. Um, it's very, mm, it looks like Apache Hive. It also translates uh, your SQL queries to MapReduce operations. And this allows you to process petabytes of data, join them and do all this stuff, but it's not very, um, latency is not very good. So if you are, if we are talking about minutes, it's okay. If you need seconds, uh, maybe it will be too slow for you. But we have something called Cheat. It's a ClickHouse engine uh, over the wait as hours data, which allows you to process your data very fast in seconds and connect your favorite tool like Tableau for BI for analytics, run ad hoc queries. Uh, and the last thing is Split. It's, it's classical Apache Spark, which is uh, a bit patched to support our transactions and to support information about our metadata in our tables. So if you have two sorts of tables, for example, and you'd like to join them, Apache Spark will know this and will skip shuffle phase to do it more efficiently and faster. Um, on the upper layer, you can see that we have our user interface. It's also created by our team. We have SDK on four popular languages, C++, uh, Golang, Java, and Python. And of course, the most, the best way to interact with Wittesaurus is, is Klee, which allows you to seamlessly inter interact with it. Um, so why should you try Wittesaurus? This is uh, the purpose of my speech, <laughs> you know? Uh, I will cover these topics one by one. So let's start from the one platform for many tasks. Um, yeah. You know that uh, because we have different kind of tables and we have different engines, uh, one huge cluster can close waste of your task, wider wider range of your tasks. For example, which is ours firstly was created as a batch processing platform with MapReduce, but uh, later it's, it became obvious that you need something for analytics and we have a ClickHouse engine for that. It's quite fast and you can use ClickHouse syntaxes to process your data uh, in seconds, if it's not too huge for you, for ClickHouse. Also, we have dynamic ta dynamic tables, which is possible to, which allows you to use Waitis Hours as an LTP storage. And you can seamlessly uh, join these tables like dynamic and static tables using just SQL without need to think that it's different type of tables. You can also prepare some dates uh, using MapReduce and insert them in dynamic tables and start serving them uh, in milliseconds. Uh, okay, we have some queues and streaming processing. We also support GPUs, so you can add servers with GPUs into the cluster and do your machine learning task if you need. Um, and of course, you can just efficiently store your data. We have uh, lots of different uh, compression codecs. You can select the one you like, and we have Erasure codecs also, which is quite popular in internally. We use them every time for more than 10 years, I believe. So it's a production-ready solution. Um, and with this kind of lots of different uh, workloads that can be uh, combined in one system, you get something very nice. First of all, uh, you don't need to copy your data to another systems. That means you don't need to uh, think about synchronization. You don't need more space to store your data in different systems and just to replicate them. Uh, second thing, uh, because you have a huge cluster, you can reuse resources from other uh, teams, which is not using them properly. For example, Wait as Hours is a multi-tenant system and it was created by multi-tenant to, to be multi-tenant. So um, lots of different teams are allowed to live in one cluster together. 
to reuse resources of each other if somebody is not using them good enough but uh, you don't you are not afraid to i don't know break the cluster or to see others data or to uh, to maybe make something wrong so we even combine production and testing per testing uh, environments inside one hour production cluster for different projects to test their workloads on their production data it's quite nice um, one more thing if you have a comp in, in a huge company you have a uh, lots of different data and you have some team which is preparing this data this team can do this only once then it can easily open the access to this data prepared to different uh, teams and give them this data without need to copy it to another system maybe to different clusters um, and we have different uh, processing processes we have different processing engines like yql speed and cheat so everyone is uh, everyone can choose the process and the engine he likes or she likes so if you'd like to uh, i don't know write on python you can use apache spark if you like sql uh, select the cows or yql um one more thing is that uh, i have said that which is ours is built uh for people i believe yeah and we have a table as a main object so like an in all databases not files but you also it's possible to store file there but table is better it's more clean and more easy to use tables uh, we have transactions i have said that you don't need to think about your temporal data and easy to develop your application under what is ours we of course have uh, strict types and support for composite types we have very nice uh, built-in ui i will show you screenshot later uh, we have sql engine very nice because uh, you have lots of different udfs and you can create your own have uh, different built-in udfs uh, you can even create different pipelines of um, using yql uh, because it supports variables and you can uh, also use some uh, nice functions for machine learning inside your sql one of the nicest thing you can do inline python inside your sql query sometimes it's uh, it's easier to do that um, and if you have worked with apache spark or clickhouse so it's easy to you to move to which is ours because we have uh, these platforms inside us and uh, they are quite the same interfaces um, i've also said that we have quite flexible storage configuration uh, we have not only tables and objects but we can also store documents and even primitive types you can insert uh, integer if you'd like into wait is ours and update it uh, we support different uh, media so it depends on you where you want to store your table how much money you would like to pay on it and uh, should it be fast or not if you need something very fast we also support in memory and storage in dynamic tables so if you need milliseconds you can go with it um, our tables can be columnar or row based and uh, i've said that we support different uh, compression algorithms replication and erasure coding so it's also possible to configure per table basis here is an example of our user interface here is a table you can see it and here are some metadata about this table for example you can see who created the table when it was created and how much space it takes uh, also this is a statical table and it is sorted so you can see that it has sorted by several columns uh, also it has compression codec lz4 and uh, yeah it's just an example how it looks um, you can see that here are some tabs so you can see the schema of the table you can control the acl and you have different attributes some of them are system so like the owner of the table but you can also add some user attributes for example you can set responsible for the table or create the version of pipeline it's up to you um, one more thing that you can see is that the table is stored in a file system so the full path of the table it's home demo cheat and the name of the table so like an uh, unix like file system but the tables in inside uh, if you'd like to run the query here is an example of our user interface for query execution you can see the sql query you can see results and you can see the history of the queries uh, the main the main difference is that here is a 
uh, full pass to the table in, in the file system. Um, I've said that the main idea why we created Wittes Arrows is scalability, because if you create uh, lots of clusters, you can't uh, use them in 100%. So it's better to create one huge cluster and utilize it uh, on maximum. So uh, it doesn't mean that you need also to create such huge clusters as, as we are. But uh, you can start from five servers and don't be afraid to push the limits. So you can just add hardware and your system will grow with you. Um, yeah. And people all often ask me about uh, security. So may, because it's kind of problem in Hadoop. Um, yeah, we are enterprise system. We are used internally. So we have everything needed for uh, for the company to be sure that their data is secured. So we have built-in token-based authentication system with OAuth support. We support TLS for data transmission between nodes. We have uh, isolated containers for user codes, so they are not uh, uh, ruining each other's tasks. Uh, we have very rich model for ACL. Uh, for example, we have columnar ACL, we have even nested groups and, you, and uh, yeah, uh, access control for different resources in your uh, scheduler. Of course, you need to know what is uh, going on in your class and we have structured access log. And for those of you who are interested in monitoring and uh, how to work with weighted hours in production, we support Prometheus format and we can uh, export all the uh, metrics there. So uh, here is an example of how people are using weighted hours such a huge platform and you can see that if you have source data you can copy it as a role like files to files tables to tables documents to documents and store them in their row format then you can use different tools like yql speed and MapReduce to transform this data and prepare your uh, marts which then can be used for visualization with your favorite bi tools like tableau for example so we have ClickHouse over YT with its JDBC on the DBC interfaces, and you connect there and have a dashboard on the same data that is lying in, in, in the system. Uh, if you need OLTP workloads, you can use dynamic tables and create, for example, your eShop. Uh, if you like map uh, machine learning, you can connect GPUs. Uh, so here is a, I think it's the last slide for me. Uh, yeah, a brief overview of the way to source. What else I would like to say? Um, if you're interested, so uh, there are some options to try it. First of all, we have a free public demo on our site. So you come and you will get free minimum way to source for you. You can just play with it. Uh, of course, we are open source with Apache 2.0 license. So it's free to, to take it from GitHub and to try to install it in Kubernetes. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find me or you can write us. Um, and tomorrow, my colleague Grigori will tell uh, a bit more technical uh, reports about what is ours, comparing it to Apache Zookeeper. So uh, stay tuned and come if you're interested. Thank you very much. I think if you have a questions, I'm ready to answer. Uh, oh, so guys, uh, do you use a special network uh, for a cluster of such size and what topology do you use? I don't think that we have just special network. I think it's usual 10 gigabits, yeah, uh, Ethernet, so nothing special. We, we uh, it, It's important to say that it's possible to create a multi-cluster or multi-DC uh, which is ours in different data centers, but it's not uh, good for MapReduce because you will need to process your data in the data center where your data is located. But it's also possible for clusters not in such huge size, maybe hundreds of uh, CPUs. Um, yes, so uh, in my experience, it's really hard to uh, invent a workload which, require, uh, which will load your CPUs in such large system. You usually IO bound, so, uh, can you run just computational workloads or how do you utilize computational capacity? 
You know, our dominant resource is CPU. So we are we have model utilization in a huge cluster right now, something or eighty-five percent. It was ninety-five, but it falls a bit. So I believe we will try to come back to it. And uh, yeah, uh, we have lots of disks there. So to uh, storage not to be our uh, not to be EO bound. So it depends on you which kind of servers you you will insert into this cluster, like in any other system. But in our hugest cluster in production, we are CPU. We try to be CPU bound because it's the most expensive resource, uh, except GPU, of course. But yeah. So uh, you essentially have very computational heavy workload and not data pros tasks. Mm. You know. Yes and no. Uh, okay, so yeah, we try. We we, uh, we try people to create uh, more computational workload, but they definitely need to read their data. So uh, you can combine different kinds of workloads. So if you need something EO bound, you can uh, select a bunch of disks and uh, separate them, and create these workloads on these servers and these disks inside the cluster. It's also possible for those who need such tasks. For others, if we're talking about different researches, uh, different batch processing and so on, I believe they are more CPU bound and we're uh, a bit forcing them to be so because CPU is more expensive than uh, disk. So we'd like to, to, to be CPU bound. But uh, our scheduler is also uh, vectorized. So you can ask for container with more memory. It's okay. In a huge cluster, it's easy to uh, to have such huge load because different kinds of workloads are combined. Some needs memory, some needs lots of CPU. You can combine them together and make it better without creating two different clusters here where one is using only memory, others is using more CPUs. Oh, okay. I'd rather give for somebody else. That's one thing on the live video. <laughs> okay. You can find me later. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much again. Uh, you can come to GitHub, uh, like us there if you if you like the product. Thank you very much.